Today on The Breakfast, new guidelines of the All Progressives Congress give Amechi Ngege others 72 hours to resign or forget 2023 ambition. Just where does the pendulum swing? Also on The Breakfast, it's time to show integrity. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and DLEA urges political parties to make drug integrity tests part of the screening requirements for aspirants. And we'll be reviewing the biggest stories making headlines across the national dailies. Welcome to the breakfast this first day morning. I am Justin Agadoni. I am Messi Ebopo. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Thursday morning. Yes, it is indeed a pleasure to have you join us. Uh, how is the weather at your end? I, here in Lagos, it's been a bit chilly. It's been uh, raining since last night. And uh, although it has stopped, but uh, some places are still experiencing some drizzling. Messi, how is the weather around you no, this morning? I, I really don't know why people start conversations saying, how's the weather? Yes. <laughs> what, what's, what's with the weather? Because it is a welcome change. That in Lagos, it has been crazily hot for some time. So with the rain last night, I'm sure some people slept like um, a baby or like babies or like logs of wood. Mm. Well, some people slept like logs of wood. Others probably would have their roof taken off or maybe, you know, in the floor, their car drowned or something. Mas, are you talking out of experience? No, I'm just saying... <laughs> I'm just saying that everywhere is flooded. You know what it is. A lot know, of people, when it gets to this point in time, maybe we'll just stick with the dry season and, you know, just stay with sun and all of that. Because whenever it rains, uh, it's usually not a fantastic experience. I mean, just the last rain before this one, it was really, you know, a disaster where you had a lot of people saying houses were destroyed, you know, flawed and what have you. Um, but we, we need to be on top of the game. I mean, the responsibility of protecting our environment is a collective one. We cannot wait for the government all the time. So some people would say, oh, uh, you have the markets flooded, you have everywhere blocked, you can't. But every day, it just shows you that human activities um, is responsible for all of this action. So the gutters are clogged. Thank God and that's said, because, thank goodness you yes, said that's that it. I mean, we are responsible. Because Messi, we need the rain for so many things. In uh -huh. as much as, when Messi, we, you don't want the greens, you don't want to eat, you don't want eat, vegetation and all of that. Works. And all that is because of the rain. If you say it doesn't, you don't, you don't want it to rain for one year just because of floods and every other thing. Uh, Mercy, you go, go home. Boy, well, do you know how many <laughs> people are going through a lot? <laughs> yes, but that's the more reason why we should not throw things into the canal and, uh, you know, free up our drainages. I know a whole lot of a whole lot behoves on the citizens you know, to do the right thing. But then the rain should rain. Let's move away from and the And the flood should take people's houses away. And people should just perish. <laughs> okay, let's slide on to top trending. The rains are not trending right now. But mm -hmm. the education uh, minister, Mwajuba, is uh, trending. Uh, there are reports that he has picked up um, his uh, uh, presidential form for 100 uh, million naira. And it has gotten a whole lot of Nigerians talking. It's all in the wake of the ASU strike. You remember ASU has been on strike since February the 14th and a lot of people are saying uh, what does this really tell he is the education minister and um, right now his main thought uh, his main uh, business right now is uh, to contest for presidency in 2023 when uh, our students are at home and lecturers are just there seated we are with the federal government not uh, meeting up to their you know, demand since 2009. Messi, how do you reason all of that? Do you know, first of all, so we go back to the point where we say everyone has a right to contest. I mean, mm -hmm. so because the constitution allows everyone the opportunity to vote and be voted for. And so, yes, they are within their rights, they're acting not, you know, contrary to the law. And that's it. Otherwise, I mean, uh, the other restriction would be whether or not you're a criminal or you have any criminal records, mm -hmm. which would be the responsibility of uh, the police and also the judiciary. So uh, it's a long conversation. But however, it's interesting. But I don't understand what's going on. If you notice, it's a pattern. And a lot of people would just say it's a conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. So if you notice the pattern that 
Too many persons are coming out <laughs> <laughs> in the APC. You also have declared, you you also declared I don't, yesterday. I'm not partisan now. Of course, you know, when I don't belong to any political party. So but you, I mean, you declared, uh, you know, independent candidacy yesterday. No, I can't. the Constitution <laughs> hasn't ahead. given all of that. No one listened to me. That's that's number one. So all just right. forget about it. Okay. The ambition is dead on arrival. So oh, but really? the point is... Uh, I'll, vote <laughs> so I can, I'll vote for you. Would you listen to me? Sometimes. No, <laughs> both alone cannot make me go anywhere. I'll go to my constituency, <laughs> my entire village. Who do you have? No, okay, let's move away from that. Let's talk no, about but the, the major thing minister. here is. Yes. Um, so I don't know what's going on, but if you follow, if you look at the pattern, mm -hmm. especially with the APC, you, you find that every minute, now there's going to be a primaries for the presidential ticket. I mean, for the per, uh, presidential yes, primaries yes. on the 30th and. The 31st. So it's going to be 30th through the 31st of May, right? Am I correct? Uh, yes, next month, yeah. So, but, and then, then you see have a lot of people, persons coming out. So yesterday we talked about the uh, the governor of uh, Cross River State. Uh, now we have, you know, education, education minister. minister. So what's really going on? But normally if you look at how this goes is if you have a lot of people come out, for instance, at the end of the day, uh, you have the elections, then you have... Justin, Messi, every other person Comfort. out in the race. You know what happens? We yeah. begin to split the votes. Okay. I don't know if you get it. I, so, do, I do understand you. So yeah. I, I don't know if this is a strategy at the party level because there's going to be splitting of votes. So maybe just one vote will get someone there. It's You have to split it. But at so the end of the day, the party will decide on just one person. No, 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 no. But the, uh, the APC is not saying that they're going to... It's not a consensus issue. No, what I'm saying is that even, even if they all declare interest and they have bought forms and paid 100 million, eventually it's just one of them that would actually you know, fly the party. And that's ticket. because it's still possible that within this, okay, so um, within this particular space, you have the fact that we want you to become the flag bearer. You want me? But because, no, I'm just citing for <laughs> instance now, we want you to become the flag bearer. Yes. But because we cannot come out to say we want consensus, and that's because we're going to offend a lot of persons in the party mm -hmm. and also other regions. And so we just say, let's leave it open. So, so we leave it open, and then interest. we have a lot of people come out to say, hey, we're also, we want to become president. Not necessarily that they want to become president mm -hmm. because I don't understand. They know they cannot win the, you know, they cannot become the flag bearer of the party, but they come out. So mm -hmm. why? What's the intention behind all of this? Mm -hmm. So it's going to split the votes with within the delegates. It would, it would actually do that. So you, so you probably would have a, a group of persons who would say, okay, we want a certain person to become the flag okay. bearer. And all of the attention will be, you know, okay. pushed in. And these conversations are usually not... Uh, yeah. I, I get all of that, but mostly the, the, the concern for me here is that uh, those who are responsible to you know, govern the space of um, the country are no longer doing that because of the interest. Good thing, we're even going to discuss that uh, much later on the show, the APC new guidelines and the you know, ministers and those who have political appointment being asked to resign. They have better like three days to do so, so they can actually decide if they want to contest or if they want to stay in government and face the business of governance. For instance, uh, we have asked to be on strike for over two months and um, is the discussions have been stored over time. I know that he has the constitutional right, the minister that it is to contest, uh, you know, for the presidency. But the fact is that uh, I feel it's morally wrong. Although morality doesn't really count in most morality of the state here in Nigeria, law. but the students are at home. Lecturers are not, uh, you know, teaching and. Um, the concern right now is not even about how to fix this problem. It's about um, your personal ambition for 2023. Maybe, maybe he thinks that when he gets there, he's going to solve the problem. Why uh, does he, he should do that right now? Uh, it probably might not just be within his, you know, entirely not in his space. But he is the, the head powers. of education in Nigeria, so everything behoves on him. If lecturers are on strike, first of all, every, everything points to his direction. So everything points to his direction. You also cannot forget the fact that if you look at it, you ask yourself, what's the budget for uh, education? That's also a, another mm. issue. So as much as he might feel like he's a king in his space, mm. he's not really a king, mm. right? But not holding breath for him, 
it is what it is. Politics, I mean, interest, um, no permanent friends, no permanent enemies, so permanent no permanent interest, and that's what it is. Mm. But for, if you look at the APC, and if you look at the fact that every minute, I mean, just before we leave this conversation, we might just have another person who's going to be declaring. I won't be surprised. Uh, but but they, have barely, they have barely three days to do that, because uh, from their constitution, they have to do that 30 days before the primaries. But let us move on away from the APC, away from those who are, you know, declaring uh, their intention to run for the presidency. You, Edoche, is in the news. In as much as I don't like discussing people's private business, but... When your private business becomes, <laughs> becomes public, public business, <laughs> we talk about it. Yes. Justin, you don't need to become very, you know, organized. I should be organized. Yeah. No, I, I have my dogs in the room, but the thing is that, fine, Nigerians are coming at, coming at him because, no, because of what he said about um, his <laughs> wife or his first wife. Right now, what we hear is that uh, Yule Doche is announcing um, his second wife. Uh, it was everywhere, you know, and uh, he talked about his son uh, that he got through uh, his. Uh, uh, the second wife. So, but what got many people talking was that, you know, there's a time he was just pouring a whole lot of, um, you know, praises on his first wife, how the woman stood for him, you know, for like 15 years and all of that. And voila, mercy, the story has changed. You're smiling. <laughs> because there's a lot, you know, to talk about. I mean, young ministers, uh, Yola Doce. A lot of people have respect for him and not also looking at the fact that he has his come out to political ambition, mm -hmm. right? But you know, in Nigeria, we have not really um, incorporated the issue of, you know, your personal life. I mean, that into your political chase and race. In all the climes, it would be a very big deal. It would be a big is, issue. Yeah. And it had all always been, you know, a big issue. But let's just continue to say that we're uh, a developing uh, nation, and we're also uh, our democracy is very nascent, and so we we have a long way to go. But um, this isn't public space, <laughs> you know. It therefore means that it's going to be a public conversation. Yes. Um, at, at the time where he had constantly talked about his wife, 16 years. Mm. I mean, he mentioned on that particular tweet, um, the best thing that has happened, she's never stressed him but out. trust Nigerians to dig out all of no, this. No, 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 <laughs> I mean, how do you even explain? I mean, look at it now. How do you juxtapose all of that? So you say, 16 years after, you put up a tweet and say, your wife has been fantastic, the best thing that's happened to you, 16 years, she's never stressed you. And then two, two seconds after, this is 2022. <laughs> So we have you saying you have a second wife. He also has a tweet. Mm. The good thing is the internet will never forget. Twitter will never no, forget people you. Will drag, All of people your tweets, including my tweets. So sometimes I'm very, <laughs> I'm very careful about the tweets that I actually put out. Because, you know, this space will never... I put out tweets. I tweet, but you know, you you know I'll how you can just tweet. You, soon, don't worry. you know how you can put out tweets, and twenty yeah. years after from now, the tweet will come back and haunt you. True. Mm. True. So people have actually gone back again to that tweet that where he tweeted about. I mean, to a comment that he put out on social media talking about, oh, it's not a big deal. I mean, if you are a man, you have a second wife. It's not that you were a man. It's the fact that you are breeding confusion for the next generation. God, where do we hold you now? You know, there's no correlation. Any people say there's no correlation. Where did we? Oh no. You know, but the wife. So I some hear, people. <laughs> I, I, hear I don't know what to say. I mean, it leaves me very confused and tired. You know, you know how it is in our African society and tradition. You know, a man can decide to marry as many wives as he so wishes, so long as he can. Oh. Sometimes you don't even have the money to take off the wives that you have several wives and have like, you know, a house full of children. <laughs> 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 and when you want to go on vacation, it, it's a lot. So you have to get visa. We need no. But um, but the wife has actually commented, right? Yeah, she has. And so if I start talking now, Justin will say, "Oh, because you're a woman, no, and then no, you're sounding no, no, very no. emotional." I'll just, I'll just listen. So, but he tweeted that and said, "My son, let everybody meet my son." I'm paraphrasing now, and I can't remember what he said. Let everybody meet my son. You know, mm. it's fantastic, great. My second wife. Okay. Where is this coming from? And the wife went ahead to say, may God judge you both. Mm. That's so, a lot of fire. So what, 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 do you, what do you actually infer from the wife's um, comment? She's not happy? She's bitter? Does that sound like she's happy? So she's bitter. 
Doesn't she, she have the right to be? Does she have the right? Is it just when you say bitter? There's something like she's bitter. bitter. She's angry I mean, that's she's... a lot of betrayal there. <laughs> Don't tell me bitter. There's something bitter about that. Who betrayed who? Oh, just <laughs> put me in the spot. Why are you doing this? <laughs> But it's, it's quite unfortunate, but I, I think it's just a human thing. We're, we're humans, and so we're bound to be, you know, on this side and this other side, and you can never tell what would happen. So you just live life and just take it the way it is. Whatever comes, it comes. We wish uh, you, Ledoche, and his family um, all of the best. Uh, but we'll slide away from all of that and move on next to the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, who is saying that uh, he owes uh, no allegiance to anybody, but for, of course on the oath of office that um, he has taken. You know, there's been so much talk since the Vice President um, declared um, his um, ambition uh, to contest for the presidency in 2023. A lot of people you know, have come out to say that uh, he has betrayed his principal. Uh, that's um, the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And all of this came um, to the fore just yesterday. And um, once again, the Vice President said, you know, Categorically, that he owes no one any allegiance, anything outside his office, I mean, he couldn't really be bothered. So the, the, the question would now be, <laughs> is that a statement of fact? Mercy, who does do, he do owe allegiance to? <laughs> do you think that's a statement of fact? Do, does he owe allegiance, you know, except to the constituent, to the people that he's want to protect? I'm asking you again. I'm do also, you I also truth back at you. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to know that politics, like you have rightly mentioned, uh, we also understand that when people come together, there's interests, personal interests as number one, top on the notch. And so uh, people would always have permanent interests. The interests will never change. Mm. And so they can have affiliations, uh, you know, they could have friends, but these friends would actually always change. And so that's why you say uh, you have no permanent friends, no permanent interests. Oh, okay, no permanent, permanent, interest. uh, permanent interest, but no permanent friends. True. And so it means that friends could always change. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I'm friends with you today might not necessarily mean that I will be friends with you tomorrow, but mm -hmm. my interest would always be constant. True. And so if my interest is constant, then anything can happen. I can decide to have another affiliation with another. But it's a lot. So with this, the, the, the reason why sometimes uh, I think that we need to take a break, not so much, but because this is actually going to be within the political, um, you know, arena, uh, the conversation would be within the party level right now. Because with all that everyone will do, I mean, if you look at the list of uh, persons who are contesting now, uh, who wants to become the flag bearer of the APC, the list is almost endless. So you have the former governors, you have governors, you, you, you just have a lot of people on that particular list. But mm -hmm. the party will decide, and that's what's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So it is when the party moves there, at the end of the day, the party has a decision, then we know we have a flag bearer for the party. Nigerians would definitely decide whether or not they want this particular candidate. So it's okay to have all of these concerns and all of that. But let's also understand that at the end of the day, even when nations come together, you have the United States, you have Nigeria, you have Ghana, you have Germany, you have Japan, they would always act in their interests. National interests and personal interests would always supersede, you know, every other interest. And that's why you constantly have uh, the fact that policies don't really reflect the interest of the people, but reflect the interest of a certain. Mm -hmm. So maybe the elites or people who are supporting him and his clan and all of mm -hmm. that. Yeah, like speaking of support, you know, all of this came out from um, uh, what happened, his visit to Ogun State and uh, how the governor, Dr. Babiodo, uh, said um, uh, that um, he has um, their uh, support. I don't know if he was speaking for himself or the, the entire people of Ogun State. But then the vice president uh, actually, you know, was quoted as saying that um, he has served Buhari, that um, he should be the next president. It doesn't really work like that no, if you doesn't. look at it, really. Maybe mm. because it's you actually served. Yeah, because you, because you because you actually served. You know, the, the president doesn't really work like that. Let's take a, for instance. I mean, let's take a look at uh, Atiku. You mm. remember that Atiku and. Uh, the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo. You know, he, he was the but president. But does it he really, vice like you have said, it does not really follow a, a, a complete logic. You know, just because um, uh, you have served um, 
um, with your principal or the president, that's Mohammed Bore, that you deserve next time. It still comes back to some uh, people Basic saying things. entitlement and all of that. You know, it, it, no, does no. it really follow? Uh, so is it like a pattern? Just because I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to understand that what he meant by that he has served the president, so he deserves, you know, to be the next. Because a whole lot of things. So, so I think that that's a comment on sentiment. I mean, it's a very sentimental comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's like saying. Because I am a graduate, it therefore means that I should have a job. Or the best of jobs, really. No, yeah. not necessarily a best of job, but just say because you're a graduate means you should have a job. That's not even, uh, you know, that's not even a criteria for it. So you, because you have graduated does not mean that you should have a job. Have I mean, we have a lot of graduates who are out there who don't have a job. So you, so there's a lot, I mean, a lot of work. So first of all, you have to maybe be qualified for certain you have to have some certain skills that employers would want to you know consider and True. then say okay we want to hire you now and if you look at politics like we see all the time politics goes beyond saying you have a beautiful face or you're very popular and then you say hey i'm here i want to become president and that's fantastic because i see a lot of people who say they want to become president and sometimes i feel little bit you know, what's going on? Do you think that the office of the president is a joke? Mm. But because the constitution says we all have a right, then everybody has a right. But it goes beyond that. There are a lot of issues that are involved. And if you look at the peculiarities surrounding, you know, our own climb, we talk about money politics. Uh -huh. It's very big. So, uh -huh. so we, do, we don't need to be very pretentious about this. Let's not begin to say, oh, it, it doesn't really happen. It happens. Money changes hands in our politics. And let Every nobody begin to day, say, oh, come on, put the evidence. Time. We know all of that. That's what happens. So you begin to ask yourself, do you have the financial muscle? Yesterday, we had a presidential aspirant um, of the People's Democratic. But then he mentioned the fact that in, in 2019 or thereabout, he could not stand a chance because he didn't have the money. The question is, do you have the money now? So money plays a major role. So you ask yourself, do you have the money? Let's even forget it. Also, oh, let's not talk about that. But that's the reality. On the other hand, you also need to talk about structures. Elections are not just won by saying, oh, you want to become president. Fantastic. You have walked <laughs> everywhere. That's not, that's not it. So if you talk about a certain political party, you have the fact that you have 774 local governments across the entire federation. What structures do you have in this local government? So if you have the old, because you, you see the hype on Twitter, it, it's okay to have young work. people go on Twitter, but how many young persons have the PVC to vote? And mostly you go, because I have monitored elections at the grassroots level, and mm. you, I tell you the people who come out to vote, these are older people, these are very old people. Now do they recognize, because it is what it is, so they look at the sign what sign is this the logo so how do we identify this party <laughs> and they're being told when you see a certain thing this is a certain it's party the umbrella or the so umbrella. this party that you're going to be conversing i mean you're going to be a flag bearer do they do people recognize it mm -hmm. let's not even forget that poverty is very strong for us mm -hmm. it's a major thing and some people have, have also thought that you know our politicians have weaponized poverty so poverty has become a tool where they use constantly ensure that people stay poor because when you stay poor, you don't understand the dynamics. And so it's easy for you to be given a bag of That's salt. That's they now do their no, stomach, not a bag of salt. stomach it's a infrastructure and all that. And, you know, two okay. cups of rice that mm -hmm. won't take you a day. All right. Uh, it is actually something. But let's uh, uh, move on to our last um, top trending for today. You remember the Terrorism Act of um, 2013? All right now, the Senate is actually amending it, Mercy, and right now they are saying that uh, there should no longer be payment for ransom to kidnappers. You know, there are several angles to this because um, a lot of people would say, remember all the, ki all, all the kidnappings that we have had in the country, uh, you know, in, in Kaduna, in Niger State, uh, when specifically the governor of Kaduna State that uh, had said that they would not, um, you know, negotiate with terrorists. And but all, all behind... Uh, closed doors, uh, what we don't get to hear is that um, what actually went down, how did these people uh, secure um, the release of the, uh, the ki uh, those kidnapped? At the end of the day, monies have changed hands, uh, but uh, we don't get to hear this. But what is here is that uh, we would not um, negotiate with terrorists. And sometimes the parents of um, these uh, kidnapped victims, uh, because they are very worried about their children, you know, they do negotiations for themselves. And uh, because they feel the federal government or the state government, uh, you know, are not really doing the needful. So they take the bull by the horns and they negotiate and they contribute and they pay ransom to these kidnappers. I wonder what would happen with this new development. Well, uh, 
It's a very dicey conversation, mm. and some people will say that the Senate having to ban payment of ransom to kidnappers is very apt for us. Mm. But let's even look at it now. This is actually coming at a time where you have, you remember the fact that the trains were attacked. Uh, you remember the train kid attack that the happened? The Bojaka do not get trained, yes. Yes, and so you, you have um, passengers who were kidnapped. And so payment for ransom. The government over time have said we don't pay ransom. People, the arguments, we've tried to say, hey, we're not, we don't negotiate with terrorists. Uh, we don't pay ransom uh, to kidnappers. But is that really um, the, the, the true state of things? But this is coming at a time where these families, victims, you, you know that recently uh, you had all of that report. And so you still have some persons who are still in the hands of these kidnappers, uh, the kidnap that happened. And so the families are already saying that we're ready to embrace negotiation, whatever it is, we're willing to pay, uh, you know, the ransom uh, to get our loved ones been freed. So um, what's the way out? What's the solution? Um, will these people be able to? I mean, what's the solution this government's providing? Do they if you're saying the that government enough to actually secure the release of their, their exactly. family members, you know. I mean, so, so to the point where you have families saying, okay, we're ready to have this negotiation with uh, kidnappers and mm. to ensure the release of those who have been kidnapped. Right. Uh, it's a lot, but um, let's see how it is. We're not, we've not been very, uh, very, very, very great with laws and implementation of some of the loss that we do have. But uh, fingers across, we'll see how all of this develops. That's the much we can take at this point in time on Top Trending. We'll definitely return tomorrow with more interesting conversation, generating reactions in different spaces. In the meantime, we will step away and when we come back, it'll be time for us to look at the front pages of our national dailies. Please stay with us.